This video is about exponential functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.3. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Write limit statements for the end behavior of the following exponential functions. Problem number one. On the left, this function is rising. So, the limit as x approaches negative infinity is infinity. On the right, this function is approaching the x-axis, the asymptote at the x-axis. So, the limit as x approaches positive infinity is zero. In number two, as we head towards the left, the function is approaching the x-axis. So, the limit as x approaches negative infinity is zero. On the right, g of x is falling, falling, falling. So, the limit as x approaches positive infinity is negative infinity. For number three, the key is to draw your own picture. The model for an exponential function is f of x equals a times b to the x. Because the a value is positive, that tells us that h of x will be above the x-axis. Because the b value is greater than one, that means it is an exponential growth function, which will be increasing from left to right like this. So, as we head towards the left, h of x will be approaching the x-axis asymptotically. Therefore, the limit as x approaches negative infinity is zero. On the right, h of x is rising, rising, rising. Therefore, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of h of x is infinity. Number four, let's draw the sketch. Because the a value is positive, we know that k of x will be above the x-axis. Because the b value is less than one, or rather between zero and one, this is an exponential decay function and k of x will be decreasing from left to right as we approach the x-axis asymptotically. So, as we head towards the left, k of x is rising, rising, rising. Therefore, the limit as x approaches negative infinity is infinity. As we head towards the right, k of x is approaching the x-axis. Therefore, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of k of x is zero. Number five, begin by drawing the sketch. Because the b value is greater than one, this would be an exponential growth curve like this. Except because the a value is negative, the curve is reflected over the x-axis like this. Now we see that as we head towards the left, the graph of m of x is approaching the x-axis asymptotically. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of m of x equals zero. As we head towards the right, m of x is falling, falling, falling. Therefore, the limit as x approaches positive infinity is negative infinity. In number six, the b value is pi over four. This is approximately 3.14 over 4, which is less than 1. Well, more specifically, it's between 0 and 1. So this would be an exponential decay curve, like this. However, because the a value is negative, the exponential decay curve is reflected over the x-axis like this. As we move to the left, n of x is falling, falling, falling. Therefore, the limit as x approaches negative infinity is negative infinity. As we move towards the right, n of x is approaching the x-axis. So, the limit as x approaches positive infinity is zero. Match the graphs of the exponential functions below with the correct description of the graph. For number seven, the graph is falling from left to right, it is decreasing. Also, it's bending downward, like part of an upside down bowl, so it is concave down. D 
decreasing and concave down is Roman numeral four. Number eight is decreasing from left to right and it is concave up. Decreasing and concave up is Roman numeral three. For number nine, the graph is increasing from left to right and it is concave down. Increasing and concave down is Roman numeral two. Number 10 is increasing from left to right and it is concave up. Increasing and concave up is Roman numeral one. Sketch a graph of an exponential function with the given properties. Number 11 says the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is negative infinity. That means that on the right, f of x must be falling. So that would look something like this as an exponential function. And then incidentally, we want the limit as, as x approaches negative infinity of f of x to be zero. And as you can see, as we go to the left, the graph as drawn is approaching zero. So this is a good graph. For number 12, let's do the infinity first because that will sort of automatically take care of the zero. This says that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x is infinity. That means that on the left, g of x should be rising. So, as an exponential function, that would happen like this, rising on the left. Then incidentally, the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x is equal to zero. Sure enough, as we head towards the right, g of x is approaching zero. Number 13 begins as the input values of h decrease without bound. If the input values are decreasing without bound, that means x is approaching negative infinity. So the limit statement begins like this. But then it says the output values decrease without bound. That means the limit is negative infinity. It goes on, and as the input values of h increase without bound, in other words, as x approaches infinity, the output values get arbitrarily close to zero. In other words, the limit of h of x equals zero. Now it's time for the sketch. I recommend starting with the negative infinity instead of the zero. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of h of x is negative infinity. This means as we go towards the left, this graph is falling, falling, falling. So let's draw that. As we go to the left, the graph is falling. But I've also drawn it so that as we go to the right, the graph is approaching zero. In other words, the limit as x approaches positive infinity equals zero. Number 14, it starts off the initial value of the exponential function k is five. The initial value is the y-intercept. So they're telling us that the y-intercept is going to be five. And k demonstrates exponential decay. That means k should be decreasing and approaching the x-axis. And of course it had to go through this y-intercept. So there's your graph. Be sure to label it. Number 15, the graph of the exponential function f is shown above. Which of the following pairs of limit statements describing the end behavior of f is correct? Well, as we go towards the left, this graph is approaching zero. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity is zero. As we go towards the right, f of x is going up, up, up. In other words, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x equals infinity. So let's see, zero on the left, uh, infinity on the right. The answer is C. Number 16, let g be an exponential function that is increasing and concave down. 
which of the following could be a graph of G? We can see that A is increasing from left to right and it is concave up. We can see that B is decreasing from left to right and it is concave up. From left to right C is increasing and it is concave down. Finally, from left to right D is decreasing and it is concave down. We were looking for the one that is increasing and concave down. So the answer is C. Number 17, the graph of the exponential function h is shown above. Which of the following could be an expression for h? This is the model for an exponential function. Because the curve is above the x-axis, we know that a is positive. So we can eliminate option a and option b. We see the negative 2 and the negative 2 thirds. That's no good. We also notice that h is an exponential decay function. Notice how it is decreasing from left to right. That means that b is less than 1. It's between 0 and 1, but focus on the fact that it is less than 1. So that means that c cannot be the answer. We see this b value of 2 is greater than 1. That would be an exponential growth curve like that. So if c is not the answer, then d must be the answer. It is, it is the only option that has a positive a value and a b value between 0 and 1. Number 18, let f of x equal 3 to the x power. Which of the following statements about the graph of f is correct? To be extra clear, f of x equals 3 to the x is the same as 1 times 3 to the x. So the a value is 1 and the b value is 3. The fact that the a value is positive means that the curve is above the x-axis. The fact that the b value is greater than 1 means that we are talking about exponential growth, which is something like this. So from left to right, f of x will be increasing. So we can eliminate d and c. Also, back in unit one, we learned that if f of x is concave up, the rate of change is increasing. If f of x is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. Because f of x is concave up, we know that the rate of change will be increasing. So the answer is A because F is increasing at an increasing rate of change. Number 19, let G of X equal negative two times five to the X power. Which of the following statements about the graph of G is correct? Because the B value is greater than one, G of X would be an exponential growth curve like this. However, because the a value is negative, that means the curve is reflected over the x-axis like this. We can plainly see that g of x is decreasing from left to right. We can also see that g of x is concave down. If a function is concave down, its rate of change is decreasing. So the answer is D. G is decreasing at a decreasing rate of change. Number 20, the exponential function K exhibits exponential decay. Which of the following could be K? Let's draw a sketch. An exponential growth curve looks like this and an exponential decay curve looks like this. Both are above the x-axis. So the A value cannot be negative. We can throw out option C and option D immediately. It will be exponential growth if the B value is greater than one. So option B would be exponential growth because we see the B value of four, which is greater than one. We are looking for exponential decay, so the answer is not B. So the answer must be A. Notice that the B value of two thirds is between zero and one. That's what it takes to have exponential decay. Number 21, 
the graph of the exponential function f has the following end behavior. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals infinity. This means that on the left, f of x rises towards infinity. The answer cannot be a because f of x approaches zero on the left. The answer might be b, let's come back to that. The answer cannot be c because as we go towards the left, f of x falls, falls, falls. And the answer cannot be d because again, on the left, the graph approaches zero. It does not approach infinity. So, the answer is b. This is the only graph where the limit as x approaches negative infinity is infinity. Also, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is zero. As we go towards the right, f of x does approach zero. Number 22. The graph of the exponential function g has the following end behaviors. I think we should start with the infinity. The limit as x approaches positive infinity of g of x is negative infinity. This means as we move towards the right, g of x falls and falls and falls. So the graph must look something like this if we're talking about an exponential curve. Also, notice that as x approaches negative infinity, this curve does approach zero, so it automatically satisfies the first limit as well. So let's use this graph to choose which of these four equations is a match. Because the curve is below the x-axis, the a value must be negative. So d cannot be the answer, I see a positive one-half. C cannot be the answer because of the positive three. So it's either A or B. Now, I can see that this curve is a reflection of this curve. All right, the negative A value reflected this curve over the x-axis. So let's look back at the orange version um, without the reflection. This would have been exponential growth. So this tells me that the, the B value must be greater than one. So we know that the answer must be B because G of X would be an exponential growth curve that was reflected over the X axis, giving us this. Number 23, let H be an exponential function defined by H of X equals five times pi over three to the X power. Which of the following statement pairs is correct. Remember that pi is approximately 3.14. So this curve is very close to five times 3.14 over three to the x power. Let's draw a sketch. The positive a value means that the curve will be above the x-axis. The fact that the b value is a little bit bigger than one. 3.14 is a little bit bigger than three. So this improper fraction is a little bit bigger than one. That means that h of x is an exponential growth curve like this. So the answer is a, because from left to right, h is increasing and concave up. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.